one. Uh, the RC twenty one uh, channel twenty one. That's uh, <coughs> the public channel. That's uh, that's, that's public. That's PBS. PBS. Yeah, that's part PBS, of public yes. television. Yeah. This is uh, this is cable. cable. It's unique to cable. This is Manhattan Network. It's they got four channels that uh -huh. they have. Gosh, they run about twenty two, twenty three hours a day too. They fill those channels up with programming. But is that linked to the cable TV which exists in uh, Manhattan? I mean, uh, yeah, it's uh, all of Manhattan. Yeah. All, uh, welcome, welcome very much to Conversations, where it's my pleasure to welcome to the program Dr. Unir Kirdar, and he is the uh, president of the Society for International Development and is very involved with uh, understanding international affairs, and particularly from the standpoint of seeing the United Nations. And we want to talk about it and many interesting events that are taking place there that are in a considerable degree under his purview. And Dr. Kirdar, uh, welcome very, very much to Congress. It's my pleasure, Harold. I wonder, I wonder if it is. We, we have some considerable time. I wonder maybe you could, if you would. Uh, we, we, we're going to talk about a great number of things having to do with international development, United Nations and that. But could you share your own personal background a little, where you were born, educated, that sort of thing, and sort of ground it for us here? And then it's we can start talking about the state of the world as we begin to look ahead. It's pleasure. Yes, as you said, uh, I'm an international development uh, person in a sense. But uh, first of all, uh, nationality-wise, I'm a Turk. A Turk. Okay. Uh, Turkey gives me yeah. my national passport. Yeah. But I've been uh, I've spent uh, nearly 25 years in this country yeah. working for the United Nations. Mm -hmm. uh, my background is economist and lawyer. I went to the law school in Istanbul. Mm -hmm. Then after I went to England to London School of Economics. Mm -hmm. And also I've done my PhD at Cambridge University in England. And this was in the early 60s. Uh, and I wrote at that time in the 60s, which was still at the beginning, looking to the international effort of on the United Nations, uh, the international assistance giving, given to the developing countries. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, my PhD thesis was that. What, uh, concerned with the developing world? Yes, developing how world. It how conceptually mm -hmm. this grew up, because mm -hmm. it grew up with the good uh, <coughs> intentions which took place in this country after the Second World War. Yes. Uh, looking, uh, why did we have a Second World War uh. as compared to the first one? Yeah. At the end of the first war, the international organization which was created was well, the League of Nations, yes. but the League of Nations dealt only with the political aspects of the international community. Uh -huh. uh, the League uh, didn't have any provision about the well-being of uh, the people. And there was no universal declaration of human rights no. that was Definitely not. Yeah, no. right. uh -huh. So during the war, I mean, there was a group in this country looking, studying peace, how, when peace will come, what to do about it. Mm -hmm. And there they have recognized that the well-being of the human beings are very important to maintain the peace. That's why the Americans, I mean, th this is interesting to, uh, to say uh, because unfortunately at this age where we are living, I mean, in this mm -hmm. country, all this has been forgotten. I mean, how the Americans have been the promoter of the Charter of the United Nations yes. and the concept of the United Nations. Uh -huh. And it's the American who have argued to have a special chapter at the United Nations Charter for the economic and social rights of the people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And <coughs> it's the Americans who have proposed the establishment of the Economic and Social Council at UN. Uh -huh. And thereafter, uh, in the organization of the peace, three organizations were foreseen to regulate the international relations between the countries. One was the World Bank, which mm -hmm. we called, but it was International Bank for Reconstruction and Development. Mm -hmm. The second one was the World Trade Organization to regulate the trade between the nations. And the third one was the International Monetary Fund. But all these three organizations were not established for developing countries, but were established to regulate all the relationship which will govern after the war. That, 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 that's, that, that's interesting. I, uh, in my, it was interesting to me that you've included the World Trade Organization in that. I mean, one thing is the Bretton Woods uh, Conference right after mm -hmm. the Second War, Mr. Keynes and that sort of thing. Yeah. International Monetary Fund, World Bank. I hadn't realized the World Trade Organization dated to that time. I think oh, of it yeah. as a we think of it as emerging now as the globalization process is moving into high gear, but I didn't realize it was part you of the... What was it part of the, what they call the Brenton Woods Institute? Well, Brenton Woods was for 
uh, the, the financial side. Mm -hmm. uh, in the World Trade Organization was seen at the end of a conference which took place in Havana, Cuba. What year? Uh, probably it was in 1944 or 45. Didn't realize and, it. That's interesting. Uh, what has happened? Because, I mean, looking again, why the Second World War came was the trade relations in mm -hmm. Europe. Uh, so that's why the Americans have played a very important role to regulate type of trade. And what has happened, the charter for the World Trade Organization was drafted, but again, <laughs> what's happening now, mm -hmm. the Congress uh -huh. did not approve it. I mean, similarly. The Congress of the United States? Uh, yes. Okay, and that's, uh, yeah. that's why the International Trade Organization have never come into a being, uh -huh. and thereafter they took only a part of it, uh -huh. which was turned to a tree, free trade agreement step, GATT, uh -huh. GATT General right. Agreement of Trade. Right. Anyhow, you were asking about, about that. Yeah, sure. So, yeah. so the, uh, having done my PhD, I returned back to the Turkish Foreign Service, and I served there for s uh, several years, and I was deputy ambassador in Geneva at UN. Mm -hmm. But as I have written quite a lot about, as I said, uh, one day I, I got an offer uh, 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 by the Secretary General of the United Nations at that time, Mutant, uh -huh. to come to work for UN. In New York? In New York. Uh -huh. So I took a leave of absence and I came for two years, but later on I felt that really serving the international community is such a kind of great challenge that yeah. I stayed and I served the UN 25 years. All oh, right. Uh, I, I, within the uh, secretary, within the organization? Five years I worked for the Secretary General. Yes. And uh, in 1975 uh, I was in charge of uh, what's been taught now more about the reform of UN, mm -hmm. how to make it more responsive. Mm -hmm. And then after, the, the, I went to work for United Nations Development Program. Yeah. Uh, yeah and I served uh, uh, probably 17 years as uh, the director of the uh, external relations and also their executive board. I was the director of the executive board. Mm -hmm. And major oh, institution in yes. terms of development attempts. Yeah. And then, uh, as I've been also the, a researcher and academic, I mean, uh, I tried to develop the concept which today I can s say that uh, I feel proud of uh, being one of the person the, the who pushed that, uh, this concept of human development, which we may talk in, in, uh, in our conversation. Uh -huh. So also at UNDP, I established a kind of program uh, which was called development study programs because development is a process. There is no static uh, phenomenon. I mean, y y there is no answer. It's not like mathematical, two times two makes four. Mm. I mean, we are learning about development by experimenting it. And uh, the, my argumentation was that, that uh, an organization like the uh, United Nations Development Program should know, based on our own experience, what have we learned from our past experience to look to the future, what to do about uh -huh. that. Uh, to be effective. Yes. Yeah. And uh, I did publish quite a lot. Uh, I've been uh, editor, writer, author of 16 books up to now. 16, just <laughs> getting started. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. And, uh, uh, and they, they, that practically, oh, they were all dealing with international development? Yes. Yeah, yeah uh, right. On different aspects. I wonder if we go back a little, you, you studied at Cambridge and you right. the London School of Economics. Were you, um, there are many different kinds of uh, thinking in the name of economics. Were you in a certain, I don't want to try no, and no, no. pin you down. Mm. Keynes. Mm. Were you a Keynesian, or did you see well, things in kin definitely. Keynes I mean, kind of terms? And Mr. Uh, Nixon at one time said, we're all Keynesians now, but I don't know if that age of Keynes is passing or in a theoretical I mean, level. Uh, because Keynes was much more inclined about uh, giving a kind of a control type of world economy. I mean, yeah. the, and now, I mean, the, what has happened the, 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 with the globalization process, which we are talking now, it's, uh, everything is very free. Also, and entrepreneurialism yes. is entering, yeah. Right. Uh, certainly, it has its own advantages, the central, but, but also you need a kind of ruling, I suppose, uh -huh. uh, the, 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 to bring a kind of uh, uh, framework uh, uh -huh. about the, the relationship which exists between the states uh, the, the, and between the countries. Uh, 
But, I, but if I may, I heard you say that sure. you, in a sense, did respect Lord Keynes and, and were, in a certain sense, in that Keynesian view of the, of the but world. But now, a Keynesian viewpoint is passing through a difficult period yeah. because, I mean, it needed a governmental type of thing. Yeah. Um, I started also, if I may put that way, I mean, uh, on the hardcore type of economies, but uh, more and more I became, if I may call myself, a humanitarian type of humanist economist. All right. That uh, seeing, and that's what I'm saying, uh, developing this idea of human development, that uh, after all, development is for what? For the human beings. Mm -hmm. Yes, I mean, that's the, true. The, the, uh, the, the, uh, developing this idea that uh, you have to put the people interests at the center of all concerns. I mean, the, you have to care about the people. Uh, I mean, e again, in the, if I may, the people as opposed to corporations or an inanimate things or yeah, uh, mm. <laughs> e nations. The, the major concern uh, have been, I mean, for years, the, the, for instance, for the World Bank or I mean, these institutions was uh, a country becomes developed if your uh, GMP GNP. increases. Mm -hmm. uh, on the human side, I mean, one was, one used to know that human resource development, that the people should develop as a kind of resources. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, human beings are not only resources. Human beings should be really the objective of the concerns. I mean, what's been called in this country, putting people first should be the major aim. Mm -hmm. And we have learned the importance of, uh, which now, I mean, uh, you hear quite a lot that from your president, namely the importance of investing in people mm -hmm. on the education side, on health side, uh, the, to provide the, 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 an environment for the people. Mm -hmm. More important, what I can say on that, what dominates a person? In my own view, it's the human energy which each of us we have in our own side. Yeah. When we born, I mean, the, the, we are born equally, but all depends what type of framework you are providing a person to develop that energy, mm -hmm. human energy, I call, uh, to make him or her a better human being, first of all, for himself or herself, mm -hmm. for his, his or her own life, mm -hmm. and also to his own community and mm -hmm. her own community, what he and she can render afterwards. Uh, okay, yeah, I wonder, is, 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 is it, I, I don't want to, I'm not sure, but I don't want to put, uh, there, there was this uh, Schumacher developed, would you have been somebody who thought he had something to say, the smallest beautiful movement, or is there a name that we can associate with this, as you call it, humanitarian focus on economic development? Or yeah, I mean, it started it the, the, with, uh, in this country, the Kuznets, Denson. Okay started that and uh, again how it started because uh, it started <laughs> it's interesting again uh, in economics always a, there's a pandemic which goes from one side to another yeah, so right. uh, as I said human beings were not regarded like the capital I mean the, the, the what was more regarded here is the financial capital which you put and human being was regarded as a kind of a residual capital mm -hmm. which could have a multiply factor, and yeah. that's what Kuznets and uh, Denson have argued, taking into account the big, uh, uh, what happened, as you may recall, in the 50s in this country, uh, uh, though technologically this country was very advanced, but it was the Russian who have sent the Sputnik. Yeah. yeah and at that time, I mean... The sent the shutters through yeah. the scientific community in the West. And yeah. the question have you been yeah. asked, yeah. what has happened? I mean, the, 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 why they did it? Why we haven't done it? And then the, the, the thing was that, that education, investment on education on the people was important. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And that pushed uh, academically that side. But again, later on, the, uh, the market pushing the importance of the capital uh -huh. had been forgotten. But now there is a Again, a recognition how important it is. Now, we saw the application of that mostly in the Southeast Asian countries, like, I mean, Japan, mm. uh, the, or the miracle the, the, the which has happened in Japan, Singapore. Again, now some with the financial, they are having yeah, a difficulty. Yeah, now, yeah, right. But uh, yeah, I must say that uh, 
uh, one thing which has been forgotten, I mean, what has been good in this country? They will be passing through difficulties. Uh -huh. But I believe that they will get out of these difficulties okay. because they did develop. I'm not talking only about Japan, for instance, Korea, right, right. Singapore, sure, Malaysia. Sure. They did invest quite a lot to their human beings. The human beings' capacity will be there. Uh -huh. Once again, the financial difficulty, once it goes, you will see a pretty good recovery which will be coming. Mm -hmm. I can give you two more examples. Why Germany and Japan were being the loser of the Second World War? Yeah. Why they did recover so shortly and some of the countries haven't done so well? Well, we had a Marshall Plan for one yes. thing. That helped, yeah. But they also had a highly educated population. Exactly. Yeah. Marshall Plan. Mm -hmm was the incentive of the capital investment. Mm -hmm. But you had uh, already educated, uh, 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 trained people mm -hmm. who could have made, I mean, that's why there had been a rebirth on the, on, 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 uh, uh, the industrial uh, recovery, uh, whether it's in Germany or whether it's in Japan. So they did prove that the human capital is sometimes even more important than the financial capital. I mean, uh, financially you can always produce, but uh -huh. if you don't have the, and you can see, I mean, the, for instance, why Africa is suffering so much? There's mm. no human capital. Mm -hmm. And uh, you, by, by developing your, as you call it, your human capital, you things like education and health that, uh, exactly. and the things that make the people uh, able exactly. to function on their own mm -hmm. and to develop them in a, in yeah. a, in a sense. It's something that you Well, that's been my to, yeah. main uh, the work uh, for the past uh, 20 years to, uh -huh. to argue about that. One of the things, we've got much we want to talk about. Yes, you've had yes. this long experience at the UN, and then you also have this, uh, you know, the Society for International Development that you're there. But, and, and you are going to, we're now talking in, what, April of 1998, and you are going to have an event. I'm afraid it's going to have transpired by the time this program airs, I'm yes. afraid. But you're going to have an event where Mr. Worth, Timothy Worth, is going to be uh, talking to people. Yes, we did. Under, in a sense, your sponsorship yes. to a degree, you're going to be talking. And he's going to be talking about this very large, what is it, a foundation for? But is, and you it's know, the thing that involves Mr. Turner's uh, interest in the UN that he's manifesting. Yes, uh, yeah. the, the, and uh, the, I must say that uh, the, Mr. Turner have done a fantastic thing. I mean, uh, first of all, Mr. Turner, in my own view, is a person who has ensured the revolution worldwide. Has what? He has been the leader uh -huh. uh, of a revolution. With the CNN? And yes, yes, exactly. Right. Yeah, I mean, yeah, the, yeah, the, yeah, the, yeah. The, the well, in a, in a roundabout way, this where we're taping now is because this is uh, Time Warner. This is carried on Time Warner right. in New York. So this I is mean, Sterner yeah, 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 yeah. have done a revolution on the informatics side. I mean, uh -huh. that. Uh, Information can be <coughs> shared globally, yeah. and uh, CNN now yeah. has been f seen in every part of the world, which is bringing people much more closer. Do you know, I, I, if I may, yes. I, so I did an interview with Mr. Turner. Oh, yeah, lovely. I did an interview with him years ago when he was just yeah. thinking of starting CNN, yeah. you know. And uh, he came and we did it, it must have been in 1980 or so. And uh, it was really kind of funny in a way because I am I'm intellectually yeah. inclined, you know, I read right. that sort of thing, and I, and I did the program, and I said, well, you're going to have a, 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 a national news service 24 hours a day, it's going to influence consciousness, and I asked him, you know, what was his general epistemology or something, and he, <laughs> he said, epist, what? He said, you know, it was really kind of funny, yeah. but he was starting it, and he was saying, well, it's just something the time has come, he was visionary to do that, mm -hmm. and now there's others, Fox and there's others are doing exactly. it, and Mr. Murdoch is uh, doing yes. it worldwide, and that But kind he of had thing. the vision. He had the vision, yeah, right. And he became very international too. He got very much interested on the issues, yes. uh, which UN have been uh, very much involved. Whether it's population, environment, uh, the role of the woman, mm -hmm. the social progress. Then, I mean, as you have heard, this year he took the decision uh, when UN is passing such a kind of financial difficulties. Yes. Uh, to establish a kind of foundation uh -huh. with the merger with the Time Warner. I think that he made uh, quite a lot of profit. Yeah. Uh, he, and he made a pledge that, I mean, uh, he, through installments, uh, he, through this foundation, he can give approximately a billion dollars. To well, the United Nations. To the United Nations, but to serve the purposes yeah. of the international community, and he, especially and on that area. Exactly, and I think he particularly is interested in human development or sure. the things that 
aren't necessarily going into the general uh, fund or something, no, but is exactly. going to some sort of directed principles. And this foundation that Mr. Worth is heading up he just is the entity that. for doing and this. And he picked it up a very good person. Yeah, if I put very good. Way. Timothy uh, Worth, uh, uh, yeah, right. Uh, yeah, yeah. Mr. Worth, as you know, until recently was the Assistant Secretary of State uh -huh. uh, in the State Department dealing with the global issues. Yes, right. Uh, he was in charge of uh, preparing the American the uh, policy for the environment, uh, for the population conference, uh, for the social summit. Uh -huh. So he picked it up a person who knows about these issues. And I thought that, I mean, it's just uh, the, in the phase of uh, establishment uh, mm -hmm. that uh, to organize a kind of lecture to mm -hmm. welcome him yeah. at UN uh, by what we call UN family at large, uh -huh. namely not only the delegation secretariat, or there are several non-governmental organizations mm -hmm. secretary to UN. And I hope that next week, before that will be aired, <laughs> yeah, yeah. we'll be having an uh, uh, interesting evening. So I, I asked uh, whether he can give his perception. Uh -huh. <coughs> what are the main global issues in right. his own view, right, right. Uh, which he thinks that uh, there will be, the ch uh, which we may call the challenges mm -hmm. uh, for the next century. How they can take these resources and make them maximally beneficial and yes. what some of the cri uh, priorities are and yeah. that sort of thing. And he's going to presenting this on the, what, the 14th, I think, right? Yes, he's 14th. Gonna, I'm right. sorry, we yeah, probably yes. will have aired by then. But uh, in any event, so that's a, uh, that's a, that's a, major, that's a major thing that you're doing. And that it's, it's interesting and it's important that somebody as prominent as that in that dimension of, uh, of magnitude, of giving to that, to support the concept of the United Nations when so many people, unfortunately, and many people, I would say, in our country and in our Congress, where they've not even voted the funds to pay their dues and is part of the yes. problem why the United Nations is having trouble is, uh, you know, becomes from Washington's lack of paying their dues and so forth. But there's a lack of interest in it. There's distrust of internationalism on the part of people here. And that he gives that support to that institution is an important thing at this time. Very the the, the Very United important. Nations should be supported because oh, uh, it's the only institutional, world institutional structure that we have and we ought to build upon the work that's been done. Some people look back to the League of Nations having been, uh, you know, suffering the fate that it did, that it ought not to happen to the UN, and you know, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah I know. Right. But, yeah, look, on that too, I mean, the, the now I am retired. For the past six months, I retired from UN. That, you mm -hmm. know, I'm just serving in an honorary basis. Mm -hmm. But any international organization reflects the reality of a society. Right. <coughs> we can be critical from different angles about the United Nations, but the United Nations reflects what uh, its own member wants to do. Uh -huh. Uh, <coughs> it's not the organization with it. And I think that it's in that context that Mr. Turner had that vision that, mm -hmm. uh, first of all, the world is becoming more and more interlinked. Oh, no doubt about that. Uh, <coughs> issues are becoming interlinked. And who will deal with these problems? Mm -hmm. Institutionally. Institutions. Yeah. So if there are some shortcomings, we have <coughs> to look mm -hmm. how to make these institutions work better mm -hmm. instead of bashing them, mm -hmm. instead of cutting the funds, mm -hmm. uh, the little funds which uh, they receive, uh, I it's in the hand of I the countries which have created these institutions to make it stronger. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is here a dichotomy the, 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 which is happening in this country as far as I can see. As I lived here 25 years, I feel part of this society too. You're an oh, American. Yes, <laughs> I'm a global citizen. Yeah, right, all right, right, right. Really, Globals, honestly, yeah, I, I understand. I'm a global yeah. citizen. Right, right. And uh, looking back historically, that's why I was saying at the beginning of our conversation, the Americans should be proud because the Americans have played an important role for the creation of the United Nations. Yes, they did. They had the vision to create. That. Yeah. And due to that, I feel that now I see that this small town politician view saying yeah. that what's yeah. this international thing? I mean, the world is becoming such a kind of small uh, global village. As Mr. McLuhan said, yes, yeah, yeah. issues. I mean, look, all the environmental issues, population issues, urban development. I mean, I can cite maybe 20 issues, 20 issues, uh -huh. which you can see in everywhere. Uh, so you have to deal with these problems. Yeah, 
I, I, there would be. You mentioned globalization, right. and usually when people talk about the, uh, there's been uh, there's been some people. Robert Kuttner's written right. interestingly. Jeremy Rifkin and others mm -hmm. have written interestingly on large major trends. One of them certainly that is there, and I just bring it up for mm -hmm. your what you think uh, is globalization. The globalization is running is like a bullet train that's le left the station in terms of uh, corporations and very large multinational corporations operating without reference to political sovereignty. They're operating on a yeah, whole global pattern. Way. They're moving that way. And there's some people who say that that process is so involved, um, is so along it, a process of development, which in a sense bypasses the sovereignty of the individual nations themselves. The United Nations is based upon political sovereignty of the various yeah. countries. Corporations are thinking multinational, are thinking um, globally in terms of it just all one entity in a sense they can move capital and so forth uh, with such ease and there's some people who say that uh, this tendency of economic development is one that is bypassing the sovereignty of nations and that there are forces who don't particularly care what the sovereignty the sovereign entities of nations think they worry about the regional manager who's operating a business there and that uh, they're bypassing that and some people say that they would buy there are piece of people who would mm -hmm. in this global process. Robert Kuttner says everything's up for sale now. He's got that. I know. Yeah, he's <laughs> I know, I know written he's interestingly yeah. on that. And that it's all, uh, you know, developing that way, that uh, they would uh, undercut the UN and t just turn it into a meaningless, toothless think tank where people yeah. could think. And that there's no reason for people who are thinking that way. They should just get on the bullet train of corporate run world where the power is devolving. And that's where the real decisions for development uh, are being made, and all of these sovereign entities, including the UN, are just sort of getting in the way. What do you say to them? Uh, well, I know David Cotton's view, right? Certainly there is a truth in it, but I don't know whether it's a little exaggerated. Well, let me not say exaggerated, but what I may add on it, first of all, globalization process. This came, it's a big uh, revolution which is happening. I mean, and it happened during the past 10 years, I suppose. Uh, the revolution on the informatic side, uh, which is a second revolution, is if we can compare with the industrial revolution. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's important, even more important. Yeah, information. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, with the, the uh, uh, today, the, uh, the world has become so small yeah, yeah, with this information technologies uh, that, uh, first of all, when you look to the financial side or trade side, financial side first, mm -hmm. uh, whatever we have foreseen at the end of Second World War through IMF uh, regulating has passed now. I mean, the f finance in the world continues 24 hours. That's right. Trade is the same thing. Mm -hmm. uh, with the computer, when I say informatic technology, yeah. I refer also to the computer. I think of, I it, think yes. of, I think of uh, Ambassador Kamal when I hear informatic. Yeah, <laughs> yeah right. And yeah. Uh, today, what used to be, be controlled by the government, leave aside the by UN, like uh, uh, the transfer of the money, mm -hmm. uh, is not anymore controlled by any government. Right. Uh, you, 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 through the computer, you can move your capital from one place to another place uh, in one Light second. speed, it, it, yes. It, it, mm -hmm. it, you look where you can make more, <laughs> get more revenue. Mm. Uh, again, look, I mean, let me give, for instance, some figures. When IMF was established to ensure the necessary financial means for the world trade. Yeah, and also to currency. I mean, that was, yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, there was shortage of capital uh -huh. for trading. Uh -huh. um, and if you look today, mm -hmm. the ratio of the financial trade mm -hmm. as compared to trades in goods, yeah. at present, this ratio is 60 to 1. Really? Yes, uh -huh. it's a no. I mean, uh -huh. uh -huh. it's an interesting figure. Yeah, it is indeed. Uh, yeah, there is more exchange of finance, uh -huh. sixty times more than exchange of goods. It's interesting. Travelers and uh, City City Corp have just announced this incredible uh -huh. merger, and they're claiming they got to have these dimensions of capital in order to be operate competitively and operate in, in the global market. And I'll show you more. Yeah. At the beginning of this decade, mm -hmm. when this revolution have just started, this ratio was twenty to one. I see. In nine years, uh -huh. 
from 20, it went to 60. And in the 80s, it was one to one. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Before, the finance side was shorter then. There was shortage of capital mm -hmm. financing mm -hmm. needed for the trade side. Yeah, yeah. And now, that became a big forces. And what, is this, what does this uh, portend then? I mean, this trend, what does it tell us? Or what does it tell you? Well, uh, <laughs> I'll try to explain. The, yeah. the, uh, now, the globalization process does not limit. I mean, that's my, uh, the point which I want to make. It's not only companies now. Uh -huh. I mean, the globalization process is larger now. What we, we should not look only the corporate side. First of all, there are new actors due to uh, the computer technology, which, uh, I mean, for instance, non-governmental organizations among themselves yes. have become a big power. The media. You think that non-governmental organizations have become a big power, as you put it? Well, you, I mean, yeah. as compared to the past, I mean, oh, you used to, the past. to have. Yeah. I mean, you, you, in each community you had it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was very much thrilled, for instance, when I went to the Beijing, uh, to the women conference. Yeah, in Beijing. There yeah. Were a couple times, years ago, yeah. Yeah, it was three years ago. Yeah. There were three or four times more representative of non-governmental organizations attending that conference, women coming from Africa, yeah. Asia, yeah. everywhere, yeah. as compared to the government representatives. Yeah, but again, so those it's NGOs it's represent the people in a people, certain sense. Yeah, and exactly. some people are saying that the people don't matter that much. It's the corporations that have all the capital yeah, I mean, that really the, the, are the power, and the people are being marginalized, or people well, feel like I they're being so. I mean, marginalized by this process. People are becoming much more closer. They are forming their own powers, too. Uh -huh. yeah. Now, democracy. Well, democracy, to sure. I mean, yeah. they, they defend their own rights. Uh -huh. uh, similarly, globalization on the media side. Media, all yes, right. I mean, yeah. So it's a trend. There are new actors which are coming to the international scene, mm -hmm. which there are no rules for them. And where David argues, which I, be, I mean, on one hand side, we are we should recognize that apart from the governments and international institutions, there yeah. are new actors which are shaping our own life, policies, <coughs> mm -hmm. certainly the corporations is a powerful one, the media is another one, NGOs are the other ones, foundations, I mean I can add several like this, uh -huh, uh -huh. our own okay. life, yeah, but right. uh, uh -huh. there is no rules to regulate that. That's right. There is no international framework right. that is sufficiently strong, as there is within the United States. Exactly. We have a Supreme Court and a system, yes. and it operates so within that. The yeah. world is changing, and yeah. we have to cope with this. Uh -huh. We have to foresee how we can make all these new actors to come together to have their own rights, uh -huh. but with the rights, you have to have the, your own responsibilities. To, I mean, to become a member of a club, you, you take the rights and your obligations. What mm -hmm. I'm arguing is this. Uh -huh. So we have to recognize one way or another way to interlink all these forces at the turn of this century. Mm -hmm. Now, we are talking about the new millennium. Yes, right? we're coming to a new millennium now. Yeah, right. The, uh, that's I mean, we forget. We, we, the, we are talking like, I mean, the, 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 that uh, the, quite a lot of time. I mean, and I'm sure yeah. Mr. Worth will address this at I your hope meeting. So. Yeah, right. My point is that I mean, we are ending 20th century yeah. less than 20 months. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know. I know the clock is ticking at Seventh Avenue. I want to underline that. Yeah. 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 When we are talking about the new millennium, you, yeah. you, 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 some people think that we are talking about uh, Jesus in another 50 years. No, yeah. I mean, we'll be ending this century less than 20 months' time. As you and I sit and talk. Yes. Now. Yes, right. And uh, so we have to look. This century and this millennium. This millennium. Yeah. millennium yeah. And what will it will, will bring? Yeah. And there are several things which we have learned uh, during the past couple of years. What could be the challenges? And based on that, what I'm arguing that we have to have a new type of vision about the new mm -hmm. millennium. The Pope says this, too. Yes. Mm -hmm. And new type of leadership we need. And the Pope also, if to I may say, says we need a new economics. New exactly. Do you think we need a new understanding of economics than that which well, we have Well, not only economics, uh, but uh, the, 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 all the social scientists. Because, again, what I'm trying to argue, economics is only one side of the coin. The other side of the coin is the social side. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, in the 70s, we did not take into account 
as much as necessary the social goals of the people. It's the same token. Uh -huh. So when we are looking about the 20 uh, 21st century or the next millennium, so we have to base what we have learned in order to have a better future for the human beings. Uh -huh. it, but you, you, you did your work in theoretical f uh, understanding of economics. We have psychi psychology. We have many, mm. many different schools of thought, from Freud to Adler to all the uh, different mm. views that come under the rubric of uh, psychology. So in economics also. And we've had, there were some people who thought Karl Marx had an understanding mm. of the basic realities. Others thought from Adam Smith and Ricardo, and then they thought of Keynes, and then they thought of... There's now Schumpeter. Some people think the Schumpeter with creative entrepreneurialism and that sort of thing is mm. something that gives us an understanding. The Pope seems to be saying that there's some new understanding of economics. We, we haven't had an Einstein in economics that has presented a new understanding, a new, a new true paradigm, yeah. but only just tinkering with what we've inherited from the past when the conditions of the human, uh, of the, on the planet have changed about us from because of technological development right. and we don't have an we need an economic theory and an economic understanding that is something that is not presented by what we historically have been thinking of in terms of development or any other aspect of it i don't know if you feel that that something on that order is needed well, I feel there's very been much some the changes same. there've been some changes in the human condition that are not taken into account by but the traditional view of economics Carol, it's exactly this point which I was saying when I was trying to explain the human development All right, dimension. Right. Uh -huh. uh, I think that the, the great pop is looking from that side. Yeah. I mean, the human yeah, beings have true. been forgotten mm -hmm. uh, in that economics. Mm -hmm. And what he's arguing is exactly, I mean, he's putting uh, uh, maybe in a uh, much uh, uh, tempting manner that we have to learn mm -hmm. when we are looking to the future how to make people more happier. Well, I suppose all would probably argue that that's uh, what they were going to ultimately achieve, you know. But we, we had another big change that's occurred within the recent period of history, and that was the, the unforeseen by many of our, you know, top systems thinkers and so forth, the, the implosion of the Soviet Union, right. which took a great deal of the, um, um, the, 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 the vigor out of, you know, some people see it, that was only a state capitalist system anyway. Mm -hmm. or something. But the, the socialist argument to the capitalist cr uh, critique or the thesis and antithesis, that a great deal of the uh, wind has been taken out of the sails of that view of distributing according to need uh, right. as, as a principle that ought to be there, which does fit in very often with some of the social goals of a socially oriented, people oriented agenda. We will give them education because they need it not because right. they've earned it or something like that. Take it, and the capitalism is in the saddle, that we are, we are now a world capitalist system. Mr. Fukuyami wrote a book and said it's all over. We've d democratic uh, capitalism or is, is the model, it's one and that sort of thing. Do, 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 do you think that that's the case? Or, well, what or does th this idea of the government and private sector yeah. and private property and, pri and, and, uh, and government intervention in the private yeah. property free market economy even though Mr. Soros will warn us against it. But uh, that's a big idea to chew well, on. What has happened? I mean, the, again, I mean, the, 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 at the beginning of this decade, one of the biggest changes have been the demise of uh, uh, the social system, the, 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 the end of uh, the communist system. Mm -hmm. And uh, what uh, the world had been preached, uh, I mean, uh, had been uh, uh, the virtue of the market, everything that the market will provide. Everything for sale, as Mr. Kuttner says. Uh, what has happened? The, 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 what's market? The market is certainly the capitalist system. Mm -hmm. I mean, it changed a bit the name. Uh, now, all the prescription has been done uh, that the market will provide everything, I mean, with the freedom. Certainly, there is a good part, I mean, the very good part which has happened is the democracy, democratic part. Uh, because uh, the political side of the communism was that, I mean, it was a, a, a more dictatorial, totalitarian yeah, type right, of system. Yeah. So freedom for the people, and again, what has happened uh, the, at the beginning of uh, this decade, this revolution can be a bloodless revolution. We have to recognize that. To at the you, end you mean the revolution that overthrew the system of the Soviet yes. Union? Yeah. I mean, it came yeah. with blood, but yeah. it went without blood, yeah. which is a great thing, which has to be recognized. Uh -huh. So people 
importance became. I mean, and there are hundreds of million people who are living in these countries of transition. Now, each of them have been pushed to a new system, a market economy. All right. They have to learn about it. Uh, uh -huh. All these are good things. I'm not <laughs> uh, d d a critic of that. On the contrary, that one has, one should not try to rediscover America after Columbus, uh -huh. <laughs> if I may put that way, uh -huh. that already that pandemium in our own societies, in free societies have passed. I mean, we have passed a first stage of capitalism at the end of the 19th century, beginning of the 20th century. All right. Then in this country, we had the big depression. Uh, we right? sure did, yes. And to get out through that depression, a new deal came. Mm -hmm. That's what right. was this new deal? Well, it involved a great deal of, mar of government activity in the capitalist it's system to regulate exactly and so forth. Right. Within the freedom. Mm -hmm. I mean, can we claim that that was a communist system? No. Mm -hmm. I mean, who saved uh, the society to get out of that difficulty? Mr. Roosevelt. Exactly. Mm -hmm. By helping opening education side, I mean, investment on the roads and so on and so forth. Yeah. But Mr. Mr. Clinton, who is our president now, has just come to the thing and has great popularity by mm. moving very much, as we would say, to the right, to the market, right. and saying at the, in his thing that we have come to the end of big government. We're going to come to the end of government. Uh, he wasn't able to get the health care thing through in the name of helping the people through government, mm -hmm. and that it's going to be done through private sector entrepreneurial activity, and the trend in well, terms of the thinking. Well, it's not different. Unfortunately, well, there's, there's inertia yeah. and lag. There's inertia and lag in that. But the general trend in the world is the market and the private sector and business will take care of things. And uh, the government intervention is just let's get the government off our back so businessmen and the people who have the capital can be free to really just go out and... And, yes, and but I mean, let's function. be very candid on that. You understand well, what I'm saying? Sure, this I understand this is very the, well. This yeah. is the zeitgeist <laughs> now, right? And what I'm, you, 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 my own argument is I'm not arguing for a big government on the country, mm. not a communist type of country, but mm. uh, we have to know about what we are arguing. To There are things which the market can provide, but there are things which, let's not fool ourselves, that there are things which market cannot provide. It's as simple as this, because what's the market? Market is based on profit-making. Profit making. That's, right. that's a basic right. Right. rule. Mm -hmm. So anything for increasing the capital, the profit-making, certain market can provide all that. Mm -hmm. But there are some social side, which is not the function of the market. Like, I don't mean that health is the main concern about the market. I mean. Well, market. we have managed care, and we have doctors, and we yes, have a, a, I mean, you know, a uh, private uh, sector uh, business. Yeah, it's uh, a business. Look what has happened in this country. I, mean, uh -huh. I don't want to. Oh, no, to no, talk to, to, it. to it. No, talk to it. Because it's an issue on a world scale. Look, I mean, it, it, health is a big issue. A huge look issue. what has happened here. Yeah. Why health has become so expensive in this country? Well, because again, exposing. I mean, there have been so many lawsuits against the doctors. Mm -hmm. So insurance has been established to protect the doctors. Mm -hmm. And who's paying for that mm -hmm. insurance? Is it doctor? No. We are paying to the doctor. The doctor fees yeah. have tripled during the past 10 to 15 years. I mean, I, I've been living three decades. Yeah, now. yeah, okay, yeah. So, what I'm trying to say. But we don't. We don't have a national health service like Britain. No, I'm not yeah. arguing that. It, no, that but do you understand yes. what I'm trying yeah, exactly. to say? And also because these human picture. services and education, a great deal of education has been done in the public sector. Now there are people arguing for doing away with public schools and setting up charter schools, and setting up schools where they get vouchers. There are people who are saying it should be in the market, they can compete. And but this the is same thing about the education, too. Mm -hmm. I think that there is always a middle way. I mean, it, when we are talking about capitalism, capitalism d d d is not a monolithic type of system, no. too. I mean, there is a different type of uh, capitalist system in Europe, for instance. Mm -hmm. There is a different capitalistic system which have been implemented in the South East yeah. Asia countries. There's, there's much so more there government a, involvement in Europe. There is a middle way to yeah. that. There is a role. Of, otherwise, I mean, the, 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 we didn't invent the government. The, the government have been invented for centuries since the creation of, uh, the, I mean, the, it, what's the government? It's the community getting organized mm -hmm. to take its own interest vis-a-vis mm -hmm. -vis against the, 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 I mean, there should be a balance. Yeah. So the balance is that Certainly, I, when the pandemic goes on the other side, if the government becomes a big bureaucracy, that's also an expense which has been put on the shoulder of the people. Uh -huh. What's been argued now 
certainly you should have a smaller government but much more efficient government mm. like the market the government has to become also efficient to provide the societal type of services mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so uh, yeah, 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 yeah. that's why I'm saying when we are looking to the next century first of all we have to learn from our past what has been done good or bad to take some type of lessons from that in order to, to, to shape our own future for, for, for having a better life. Uh, again, I mean, what we were saying, I mean, in this country, there was a concept which has been more and more, for, we are forgetting about, there was a concept of the pursuit of happiness. Mm -hmm. it's, in our, it's in our Declaration of Independence, yeah. And where is that now? What, the pursuit of happiness? Yes. Uh, I how, don't know what, yeah. How, how, how you define it? It was originally written in the original document before they finally got what they agreed to. It was originally written, as you understand, the mm -hmm. uh, uh, life, liberty, and property was right. originally written into the statement. Yeah, but I mean, they they but people anyway. were looking. Yeah. I mean, happiness is not. Now, more and more, uh, <laughs> the pursuit of happiness is being found on the consumption patterns. Yes, that's right. That's what the society is, that's what's is going there on. Is, uh, yeah. Well, are we more happier when we are consuming so much? No. I mean, I'm not arguing that we shouldn't come, <laughs> but, but, but e, there are, because, again, a topic which we m may touch in, our, in this conversation uh, is, look, there is more and more, and it's an issue especially from the part from where I'm coming, I mean, uh, people are talking about these fundamentalist movements and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What we are foreseeing today, more and more in more uh, society, so th there is a kind of return, especially in the countries in transition to, a return back to the religious type of values. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There is a revival, whether it's in the Islam, whether it's on the Orthodox Church, whether it's in the Jewish or. I mean, now, some people say, oh, that's very dangerous. Prevent it. You can't prevent this. You know, again, one has to analyze why there is a reverse. Because there's a, uh, may I make a, a conjecture that there is a rejection of some of the postmodernist thinking of the way the world's going to be organized and the way they're trying to organize the world is not a very happy kind of thing for a lot of people. So they go back to their ethnic roots exactly. and to their traditional roots because the world seems to be not in good hands. Uh, that's a very good reason which you are giving. The second one is that uh, in this globalization process, there's a big part of the society which is becoming much more richer, but also there are some losers. Well, I would have put it the other way. I would have said there's a small part of the world population, well, I mean, uh, yeah, yeah, a I relatively be small be part about, yes. at the top in this that are doing very, very well, maybe 10, 20 percent, right. and there's a great number of people who are doing much worse than exactly. they have, and the trends are such that there is, uh, they may there's just get by. A lot of the social services that have been provided by the governmental intervention into the marketplace to distribute but by need according to some sort of principles of equity and so forth is being undercut by our political leadership and that we have a, a problem like that on the world scale on a national scale and then also on a world scale the difference between the haves and the have-nots and there's a few people who have uh, access to capital and tremendous power and they're doing very very well exactly. huge marriages now well, but the people of the world mm -hmm. are being uh, left behind and there's a great deal of angst and uh, anxiety well, building out yeah. of this uh, which is the reality that they see emerging. Well, you said it better than w w what I wanted to but say. But you would in generally agree that that no, is? No, exactly. The, right. My point, because, I mean, before we used to divide uh, countries, I mean, the developed countries, developing countries, mm. uh, the rich countries and poor countries. Yeah, haves today, and have-nots. Yeah. Yes, but today it's in each society you see more, you have the... Uh, yeah, 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 the rich part of the society and the poor. Mm -hmm. So the growing gap, it's not only between the countries, but, but within each society you mm -hmm. see a poor pocket and rich pocket. Mm -hmm. And the trend is away from social investment. Right. And then the losers one. Mm -hmm. Which is a large, you're getting to be, get it right into and what we call middle class, the mid people that are in the middle class and that's so forth. That's are, are being increasingly put into marginalized positions exactly. at the I, I mean, bottom. The on a world scale. The middle class, which used to be the 
strong foundation of each society mm -hmm. is now disappearing in civil society. Mm -hmm. Either you are very rich and very poor, mm -hmm. and uh, you have a, a big, uh, maybe not in this country, but I mean, you, if you go to developing countries, you see these, what's been called in economics, the informal sector of the economy. Yes, yeah. Uh, Under the table. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I mean, y y they do earn some money. Yeah, right. They don't provide any tax. Mm -hmm. They don't benefit of anything from the society. That's too. right, yeah, right. And they are the losers. They don't, these people have nothing to do, no linkage between the globalization of the world economy. Mm -hmm. They don't get it. Right. So life is becoming much more difficult for them. Yeah, and anxiety uh, and alienation is growing, even exactly. though we see great popularity for our presidents. Or, but there's a great number of people who feel alienated from the way things are and the people who are taking the are world in the way that it's values going. values and ethics. And for something new. Yeah, that's and, true. Right. And again, you see that in what we call now countries in the transition, the old communist countries. Mm -hmm. For mm -hmm. them to make that passage mm -hmm. from a communist economy to the market economy, there are several views. Mm -hmm. And that's why they are looking to their religion. Mm -hmm. So there is a reverse in the religious too. The okay. In mm -hmm. a sense. Yeah. And what's going on, I mean, the, the, again, what I'm arguing, we have to recognize that reality, but the religions too, the Pope is playing that the role, uh, 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 I think. So I think that even on the religious side, we need a kind of, I wouldn't say a reform, but a new look. What could be a role of the, even, that's another topic which one has to do, what could be the role of the religion in the 21st century? Well, that's a lot, not a large question, what it will be, yeah, right. I mean, if we you were a heart, search, yeah. <laughs> we mm -hmm. shouldn't search what has been said, the, 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 let's say, the, 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 so many years. And we, we, all, we also had, we had a whole thing, it wasn't very long ago, was it, that 50%, uh, 60% of the world bought into, as they say, the Marxist, Leninist kind of view of the world, which was one that Not was secular-oriented, and that the religious, the traditional religious systems were just myths from the past. We should get over that. Exactly. China was transformed uh, from what? Confucian? Exactly. Thing. But, yeah, so, so human being has, yeah. uh, has to search some values, some ethics uh, yeah. in itself. So that too, I mean, there are right. so many issues to which we have to learn. Mm -hmm. What have been the mistakes which have been done in the past mm -hmm. in order to correct them to have a more happier society in the future? Well, we have, uh, is, uh, I mean, is it, is it fair to say that as we sit and talk, as much as we want to use, or some would, and it's a very powerful thing, the Marxist socialist uh, view of the world is a very powerful one, the idea of distributing according to need. Right. Is a very, that why should somebody get something is because they need it is a powerful mm -hmm. idea. But um, I, there's one other, uh, but it, it does seem to me like the economics is important. Um, and I was just reading a piece of Lord Keynes the other day, and mm -hmm. it was an interesting thing to me because very often in two tracks, and we haven't got much time, I'm afraid, but we've got this globalization yes. process. Another one that Jerry Mir Rifkin's written about, and I was surprised to find that Lord Keynes had written, he said there is a specter creating, uh, haunting mankind, and it will be known much uh, sooner than we might think, and that specter is called technological unemployment. Exactly. That the technology is more and more responsible for production and that the labor input to production is much less as we get into robotics right. and these sort of things, that the people are be not relevant in a production exactly. kind of input sense to the productive process increasingly as the technology is, and yet the technology and the assets are all owned by a small number of people at the top, and there's no democratic ownership of the technology which is creating wealth, and there's no economic system that expands yeah. ownership or opens up capital credit so that they can buy assets that will pay for themselves out of future earnings. There's no theory that allows for that kind of a system to be yeah. brought into the world. It's just increased concentration of ownership of capital, which is increasing, and assets which are increasingly responsible for actual production, and that that kind of an economic model is heading, uh, is not, it will not work. I, I don't know if that makes any sense or if that's something you can Definitely. address. Definitely. I mean, the, well, what to democratize that? ownership. Exactly. You, you agree oh, with that, John? Definitely. Okay. Definitely. And uh, human intelligence will always find the way, mm, okay. I suppose. Well. Uh, what has happened, certainly there have been, look, uh, 20 years ago, the major uh, area of uh, employment was the industrial sector. Mm -hmm. 
as you said, with the robotics and with this concept of efficiency cutting of the jobs, people started to lose their jobs mm -hmm. in that area. But what has happened? A new sector has been born, mm -hmm. which has been called the service sector. Mm -hmm. And here, information technology played, again, the brain of human being have mm -hmm. created the information technology. Mm -hmm. And that has opened several new jobs, which are the service sector. Mm -hmm. But again, in the service sector too, you have two type of, like on the industrial sector, white color and blue color. Mm -hmm. In the service sector too, you have the white color and the blue color. Mm -hmm. Who are the white color? The white colors are those people who learn about using that technology, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. rendering services, mm -hmm. so they get quite well. And the blue color, or I mean the, the poorer color, is the, the all type of service sector, the cleaning, or I mean, <laughs> mm. <laughs> that side, where the, I mean, or the hamburger side yeah. of the <laughs> service. But the service sector opened a new, enormous amount of new jobs, okay. which have absorbed it. So you, okay, we, we only got two minutes sure. left. So you think it is possible for us to continue a employment act of distributing income according to labor criteria of jobs. We don't have to get ownership to people so that income comes to them by their ownership of technology. We don't have to democratize ownership. We can distribute income to people by jobs as we do now mm -hmm. to the vast majority of people in the world. But whether we like it, that's the way that it will go. That's the way. I mean, especially with the, yeah, I don't see, I mean, that there will be for a long time uh, 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 getting out of this market. Getting out of, uh, uh, get, market, getting to a democratic ownership would be a hard yeah. thing. Well, it's a big question, I'm sure. And these are touching on some of the really large questions that confront our world leadership now. Right. And I'm sure these are questions that are going to be addressed not only with Mr. Worth's presentation at the UN on the 14th. Well, I don't know what he will present. Well, we'll see. Yeah, we'll, we'll see, see because yeah, that's yeah, a, yeah. an institution. Yeah, be, and then you're also having this large event on the 21st with a number of people from this Russia, yeah, which would be very, be very interesting. That would be very interesting just to look what has happened about the concerns of uh, to human beings. Absolutely. There. Okay. Well, and that's an important one. I, there's a great Thank number of educated questions. people in Russia Thank as well. Yeah. Listen, I'm sorry. We Thank have a lot of time. Thank we have run out of time. My pleasure. And it's been a pleasure talking with you and that the fact that there were that number of people that were in Russia educated is an important factor. Yeah. Okay. Thank it's you been man. your. I'm sorry. It's been your pleasure to have the perception thing, and it's Dr. Um, Uner 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 yes. Uner Kurdar, and he's with the Society for the um, in International Development, and he's helping to uh, sponsor these events at the UN now, uh, Mr. Worth and the Russian at this moment, and we're happy to have been able to bring you his perceptions. We on conversations invite you to tune in. We'll be coming back again next week. Uh, Dr. Kirdar, welcome really very, very, I mean, thank you very, very much for coming in. It's a great it's pleasure. It's my pleasure. Well, thank okay. you very much for giving me this opportunity. Until next time. Okay. Okay, oh, so see. Fun, yeah, <laughs> one hour. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I think I, I'm well. Okay, but I just think they're going to have those. I don't know. I think those expert systems are going to come, and there's going to be, you know, I think that that I was really taken with Cain saying that thing that there's yeah. that the technology is, uh, you know, because they can have service things, but they're they're going to have. Uh, expert systems that can incorporate a lot of those kind of things and will gain mm -hmm. so that we have a technological capability. Mm -hmm. But I think we're going to have to have something other than labor as a way of distributing sure. income. Myself, I yeah. think, you know. You know Louis Kelso, the employee? Oh, yeah. Yes, yeah.